Can you hear me? Okay. Inshallah, I um, I will do okay and not mess up or make a fool of myself. <laughs> Two years about Islam, I was a very strong Christian. Uh, believed that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and he was the only way to get to heaven. Uh, but I will, and I actually, you know, really get deeply into it. I was finding inconsistencies and I was not happy at church because nobody could answer my questions. Uh, they just told me, just believe. Just believe with your faith. You know, don't think too much about it. Uh, because you ha it's about faith, it's about what you believe, not about what what your logic says, you know. And of course, that that didn't make any sense to me at all, and it wasn't a very good answer. But they really couldn't answer my question, other than the, just tell me to, to go pray and ask Jesus into my heart again, and uh, and it would just solve all of my problems. Unfortunately, it didn't. And so I just became very dismayed with the church, and I stopped going. Unfortunately, I became away from all religion. Uh, I just was agnostic. Uh, I didn't want to believe anything, really. Um, I just knew there was a God, though. I never became an atheist. I always knew there was a God. I just didn't know the right way to, to get to God. Can you, are you all still hearing me? Okay. Uh, how do I how do I lock this? How do I lock this into place? So I don't have to hold it down. Okay, hold on a second. So I think Everybody hear me? Okay. So I I just I was very depressed. I was very depressed and I one day I just cried out and I said, "You know, God, who are you? Are you are you Jesus? Or are you are you Allah? Or are you just God? I mean, who are you? I mean, I've been searching for you my whole life and I just don't know who you are and I'm just I'm suffering so much cuz when I pray, I just don't feel like I know who you are, but I want to know you. And I was crying, and I was really at the lowest point of my life, very sick, just had an accident, could barely get out of bed, uh, was totally bedridden at one point. I had lost all hope to live. I uh, had lost all hope to fight to get back on my feet. And I was totally under shaitan's whispers, uh, the devil was really playing with me and I was doing very wrong things in my life. I was having a sinful life, committing a lot of sins and just totally lost, just totally lost my way. Well, one day I just cried out and I said, God, you know, you help me, tell me, you know, who are you? And uh, that was the first, the first series of my dreams began with a dream about Muhammad, uh, actually. And that this was at a time when I didn't know anything about Islam. I didn't know what Islam believed. All I knew was that it was just a, a freaky Arab religion about terrorism and blowing people up and uh, about jihad and everything you see on the news and September 11th and all that stuff. And I was really afraid of anything Islamic and would never even dream of getting a Quran and reading it. No way. That that would just be awful, you know, that would be the Satan's book itself. Um, and of course, you know, this is what I believed, <laughs> or this is what I thought in my head. So I never investigated Islam. Islam was just not an option for me. So I started to read about Hinduism, and I, I became a Hindu for a while. That didn't work out very well. And I, and I went back to Christianity, and that didn't work out. And so I just got really, really lost. So one day when I I actually asked, you know, God, show me who you are, uh, I saw a dream. In my dream, my mother came to me. She was 
she's a Christian, a very strong Christian, said, Happy birthday, Muhammad. And I looked at the cake, and, well, who is Muhammad? And uh, why, who, you know, why happy birthday? And I asked my mother, who's Muhammad? And she said, Muhammad is the last one. I said to her, take your time, fire extinguisher. I said to her, well, what do you mean he's the last one? I thought, you know, you had a younger sister in your family, thinking that she was talking about some th somebody in the family. But she said, um, uh, but I asked her, so who is Muhammad? And what do you mean he's the last one? And she looked at me and she smiled. She shrugged her shoulders and she said, Alhamdulillah. And at that time I didn't know what Alhamdulillah meant. I had never heard that word. Two years ago. It was the first of, se of a series of about seven dreams that I had experienced. And that was the first one. Yes. That was the first one. And so I was really confused by that. And I knew that, you know, Muhammad had something to do with Islam, but I had no knowledge as to, you know, who Muhammad was, what he did, why Muslims believe in him. I had no idea. So I started reading about Muhammad. And then I found out he's the last messenger. So then I realized what that dream had meant. And I actually went and I told my story to a, a Muslim man. Uh, I, and he actually, I told him about that, what happened. And he was like, he started crying. And he said, you, got, you had a dream from Allah, you know, telling you that Muhammad is the last messenger. So that was the first sign that I had, that I had received about Islam. Um, I ignored it. I went back to trying to be a Christian, trying to convince myself that Islam is a bunch of lies, and um, so I just tried to be Christian, I was singing songs about Jesus, and praising Jesus, and all that stuff, and I was, again, very lost and confused, because I really didn't believe that Jesus is God in my heart, so I, I was really lost again, so I gave up being a Christian, and then I, then I went back to being nothing again. And during the time that I was nothing, my life totally fell apart. I had another, I had an accident, I was stuck in the bed, um, I had, you know, I was in an abusive, abusive relationship with a, with a person who was destroying me. Um, I was being attacked by uh, demons. Uh, I was really, at the, probably at the worst Health-wise, I had been in my whole life. I was in the hospital all the time. Things were just spiraling totally out of control. And I was lost. And, and I received another dream. And, and, and then another and another. And finally, the last vision I had was, was the other night, which really, really struck a chord with me. And I knew that I had to convert to Islam. And I'll basically, um, sorry to be so long on the mic, I'll try to tell you real quickly what it was. Basically, I was in my house that I grew up in, uh, in my childhood house. Uh, and I used to grow up next to a church. I, I'm in a very, I grew up in a very small Midwestern town. And um, there was no mosques. <laughs> no mosques and no Muslims around here, for sure. It's a very Catholic uh, typical Catholic uh, neighborhood. We have a church nearby that plays bells every day. And uh, so I had a dream that I was back in my house, only this time I wasn't hearing church bells. Yes, yes, Sander 7, I went to Catholic school. I was hearing church bells, uh, used to hear church bells, but this time I was hearing like a, a mosque, like the Azan, the call to prayer. And it was really, it was really freaky for me because um, there was no, never any mosque in my area, and especially here in America, you're not, they're not, the mosques don't, can't play azan in public like that. But it was really loud, and I, I remember just in my dream, I was like, 
I couldn't move. I was just stuck in my place, and I was just listening to this and this call to prayer, and it was like it was meant for me to hear it. And I just remember in my dream, I open up my window and I try to find where this mosque is, where, where it's coming from. And I, I can't figure it out. And I call out, I see my mother, she's down um, outside, and I say to her, do you hear that? Is it just me? <laughs> and she says to me, no, I hear it too. Isn't that wonderful? Everybody's finding out the truth now, thank God. So that was the dream. And when I woke up, I, I thought, strange. And then I started to think about it more and more. And as I thought about it, I realized that I had seven visions. Uh, in total, and every vision was uh, playing, it was um, uh, the same thing, calling me to Islam. Those who are haughty and stubborn-minded, and to those who refuse to believe the signs, there is a punishment. So that is when I knew that that was Allah speaking to me, and I couldn't deny the signs anymore, and I had to accept Islam immediately. So I didn't delay. I turned on my pal talk, and I said, I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to accept Islam as the truth. I know it's the truth. Uh, I've been knowing it's the truth for many, many times. So Alhamdulillah, I accepted Islam, and uh, I have an appointment to go to an Islamic center here in my city. It's a very small city, but we do have, thank God, they're just a couple years ago part of the Islamic community. So Alhamdulillah, tomorrow I am going to go there and say the Shahada again. Uh, in my Islamic center, but I'm very grateful for Pal Talk and all the people here. Um, and uh, for anybody that might be Christian in this room, or I don't know if there's any Christians in this room. Is there any Christians in this room right now? Sander? Sander, you're Christian? Um, let us let me know if you're Christian, Sandra. What are you? Okay, what are you then? What do you believe? Are you Muslim? Okay, are you Jewish? I mean, do you have a religion? <sighs> okay. So does that mean you're Jewish, Sander? Okay, Sander, uh, well, all I can tell you is that um, unless, unless you know, know who he is, you can't say you're following him. And that's all I'll say. Mm, I, I seriously, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's between you and God. But all I know is that if you believe the Jewish version of who God is, then you don't know who God is. But anyway, um, thanks everybody for listening, and uh, all I have to say is that I spent my whole life searching for the truth. Uh, I looked into every religion, and I, I was very lost. Explain why I chose this Nick. Okay, well, this, is a rep this represents my desire to leave behind kind of my Western ideas of beauty and acceptance and having to sell myself and my body and into the Islamic version of, no, I'm, I'm going to cover myself and be a mind to be respected for my soul and my mind. So I'm trading in 
my old ways and I'm adopting the modest lifestyle or the good mi- the good lifestyle. That's what I mean simply. That's what I, that's what it means. I've had a lot of people ask me about that. Some people are offended by it, and some people love it, and some people are confused. <laughs> so I've had to explain this idea a lot, um, but it's you know, it's very simple, you know. In my opinion, jeans are not modest. I don't care if you put a hijab on top of it. If it's tight, it's not hijab. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. And anybody, who, you, you know, I don't, I don't believe that jeans are modest. Unless they're really loose or something, um, but m- mostly 99% of the time jeans are not loose. So we know that they're really c- nice to wear, and, and adopting something that is more modest. Uh, jeans are not modest. I have never seen jeans that are modest, except for really loose ones, and I've never seen people wear them except for old ladies. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, the jeans that I see in my country all the time are all tight. And I've seen Muslim women wearing them, and they're, you know, they're dressed with a short, short top and tight jeans, and they have a hijab, and they think they're good, but that's not really true, you know. So that's all. No, it's clear, um, Muhammad Harris. It's clear that you're supposed to cover, and and jeans are not really modest. Je- jeans were created. We were actually created for men. They were created for men. They were not created for women. And women kind of adopted them as uh, a fashionable item to wear. And I really don't think that, you know, 99% of the time they're modest unless you get Islamic jeans that are very loosely cut. You know. Uh, Sander... That is, that is okay. You know, if you want to put that in there, that's fine with me. I don't care. In my opinion, that's my opinion. Definitely, sister. I will add you. I don't know how to say your name, but I will. (laughs) I'm still learning Arabic. I will add you. There we go. I added you now. Okay, Baraya, Sister Baraya, are you a sister or an or anti-Baptist? Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening to my story, and for the people who are still looking for the truth. I pray that Allah guides you, and uh, never give up. Uh, And uh, thank you for listening. Allah bless all of you. Thank you.